Bomb vet, hello. I'm just over good, here clicking stuff. Good afternoon. I don't know what's happening right now. It's hilarious. <laughs> I'm just over. We're gonna. We're not doing an interview. Although I guess you could be interviewed if you like. Okay, um, let's interview. Are we not doing? Is, well, all right, hold on, hold on. First of all, why is it is, before I say Wombat. anything you have to put this? Oh, God. he's a Mustang driver. I know you have a better picture of that garage now. And he's got a TR Matson, and he drives a ladies' BMW. <laughs> So that's Wombat, in case you didn't know him. Go buy his book. It helps support him. Wow. And his dream of... How is that a ladies BMW? That's what I want Because anything know. less than like a 5 Series is for the ladies. That's not true at all. Yeah. In fact, if I've, you... That's what I've been told. No, if that's you what were I've been told. Uh, And it's true... not that there's anything wrong with that. Oh, hey, somebody's made a good point. Yeah. If you are a true German car BMW guy, you'd realize how sought after that M2 is. The Germans are just an angry people. Who says I'm not? Well, then you need something more than a 2 Series. It's fun, you need though. at least a 6 Series. Why don't you get a Panzer, like a tank? Nah, I don't have any place You were to looking for it. something fun. Okay, well, today it's a mover mailbag day, so... Let's just uh, talk about cars. Well... <laughs> We could. Oh, good point, actually. So uh, my my good friend was on a flight. Spectacular <laughs> segue. That is a great segue. Was on a flight uh, yesterday and got somebody's card that used to work with Shelby and has like a Ford race team or something that I'm supposed to email to finally settle the debate. Is it a Mustang? <clears throat> oh, thank God we're going to put an end to that. We're going to finally settle the debate. Thank All right, God. here you go, right here. Uh, M4 is the end of the ladies' BMW. Really manly women drive them, and dudes buy the M5. Okay, it's mailbag. I've got a letter. Um, this is like Blue's Clues. No, is Blue's Clues the one where they do letters? We just I have no open idea. How would I know? Wonder who it's from. Hi, Mover. This is from uh, Glenn. Hi, Mover. I like your YouTube channel. Thank you. Especially the accident recaps. I showed the one about the snowbird crash to my student pilot daughter as an example of a stall spin accident. I was fascinated by the one about the T-38 instructor who crashed while flying with a foreign student. That was an example of the Swiss cheese theory at work. There were several things that were against him. Being inexperienced, flying with a foreign student, and flying into poor weather. I suspect that it showed a lack of leadership on the part of the Air Force for allowing the cheese slices to line up. You appear to be wearing special shoes in your helicopter videos. Are they race car driver shoes? Yes. I never thought of wearing special shoes for helicopter flying. But when I sit in the back seat of my champ, I'll give my daughter a lesson. My street shoes are too wide and barely fit in the spaces on either side of her seat. Race car driver shoes might fit better. Best regards, Glenn. And he was a Navy F-4 Rio trainee, U.S. Army UH-1 pilot, ATP, N-265, CE-500, BE-300, commercial privileges for everything and then retired aviation inspector thank you glenn for the email so yes those are piloti which is italian for race car driver Ooh. Uh, if you go to, if you go to my video where i picked up the zero one from the uh corvette museum that's where i bought it because they they do the tour as part of the thing and they walk you through the gift shop and i walked and i turned and i'm like those are mine and i purchased the shoes do you like and them? i like it i love them I love them. I love them. Not all well because I had them. So, nerd story. I bought oh the, my first. Isn't pair this whole in, channel nerd story? Let's yeah. Well, it. like super nerd story. Like super. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, by the way, this is the first time on the Twitter. Uh, no, Twitch. This is the first time on the Twitch. We're simulcasting, know, so you don't even know where you're at anymore. You don't know my truth. Anyway, uh, so I used to have them because I wanted to be a race car driver when I was a kid in high school. Okay. And Pelotti, Pelotti, was Italian for race car driver. So you got to obviously, if it's in a different language, it's a you good chance good. you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So I saw them when I was walking out of the I gift shop, that. and they they're like the that. color of your car, right? They are Close. almost mm -hmm. the red. There's no red in my car, but um, mm -hmm. when I started flying helicopters, I was like, they said you need a soft sole shoe, you know, something so you can feel the pedals. Yeah. Sure. And these fit the description, so there you go. Okay. Um, yeah, here we are. 
Yeah. Next question. They're super Wombat. cheap shoes, right? Super cheap. They're not they're expensive not at all. I mean, for for you, a rich airline captain, everything is super Whoa. cheap. Whoa. Whoa. Easy. I mean, Easy. Alleged. Yeah. Alleged. Alleged airline captain? Mm -hmm. Or alleged rich? Okay. <laughs> Definitely not that. Nobody's ever All alleged right. that I'm that. Well, there's a lot of questions today on the actual mailbag. I'm going to the email section of this before we get okay. to the questions from the kids at home. Um, these questions are brought to you by the letter M for mover. Hmm. And uh, a lot of people want to know the difference between the Air Force and Navy, which is great because we were in the Air Force and Navy. Uh, so this first one comes from David. As a 20-year AT in the Navy, both O and I level, I am well-versed in naval aviation maintenance, organization, and concept. I've always wondered how the Air Force differs in the way they do maintenance. As far as I understand, the guys that work on the aircraft are not part of the squadron that does the actual flying. They're part of the same unit, the wing. They're not tightly integrated like they were in the Navy. This is true. The Air Force has experimented with this idea. They've gone back and forth with having maintenance under the squadron. Personally, I think it works better in the Navy because I didn't you put a pilot you guys in don't have maintenance no. in your own squad. You got it. You've got an wow. 06 group commander <clears throat> that's a maintainer really? which the plus side of that is it gives, you know, maintenance folks more leadership roles. But the sure. downside is you've got an 06 who is co-level with the pilot type, so all they do is fight, you know. It's, Perfect. it's there's they you don't have so the so everybody goes to their corners and the yeah. pilot sides are like, hey, we got to do this. And the maintenance is like, we can't do that. So there's no adult in the room except the wing commander, who is also a pilot, who just says, make it happen. So I think I it's like better the way the all. Navy does it. Yeah, yeah, well, the Navy does it because you put a pilot in charge. He can go translate to the other pilots and be sure. like, bro, bro, listen, we only have one flyable jet. You guys need to figure this out. We can't. Well, we cannot make and, diamonds. Yeah, anything. but also like at least in in my experience there was more of a vested interest. Right. Cuz you you knew right. everybody, right? So like those even the junior maintainers knew me and knew that I was about to strap in that plane and throw myself off the aircraft carrier so there was strap a pride on. there. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. so I don't like I didn't know the Air Force did that. That's true. I mean mm. and and they've they have experimented with the idea, like they've talked about it, but it never actually happened. Um, I think back in the day it used to be squadron commander because that also gives a squadron commander more power, right? Because a squadron sure. commander can go, hey, dude, make this happen. Yeah. Um, so no. That seems no, really it's... odd. I don't like that at all. Mm. Chalk well, one up for the Navy. It just seems like there's more bureaucratic red tape than there needs to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Hard why pass. it's so much more special when you can get maintenance to like you as a pilot in the Air Force because they typically I don't. thought it was just because Air Force <laughs> no. pilots are Air Force pilots. That's what no, I was It's because of our, our organizational structure. They just don't like us. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we just go. That's why the whole Dos Gringos song evolved. Okay, oh. this next one's a little bit more serious. So I need to oh, okay. put on serious, your, serious. your thinking cap here. Uh, this one's from Brett. Mr. Lemoyne. I'm currently <laughs> serious a cadet already. Jeez. Yeah, when somebody <laughs> names me that. Oof. I am currently a cadet at the Air Force Academy going into my senior year. I have been all but guaranteed a pilot slot due to the shortages and my pilot candidate selection method, PCSM, being nearly maxed out. I also have been presented with the opportunity to cross commission into the Navy should I so desire. After three years of the Academy... I have become quite jaded and disillusioned with uncaring leadership, the bureaucracy, and me, full, me first culture of the Air Force. My friends have always joked that I'd be much happier as a grunt in the Marines than failing at playing politics, even as a 21-year-old cadet. I care about my people and doing whatever is necessary to defend this country, not whatever crap gets me promoted or looks good on my record. My question is this. Given your time in both the Navy and and in the Air Force later in your career. Do you think the Navy has a more productive and mission-oriented culture, one that might suit me better? Or is the effect of bureaucracy experience regardless of, of where you go? I just want to be the best pilot and officer I can be without worrying about promotion boards or leadership coming after my throat on a whim, and I'm not sure the best route to do so. I'm not laughing. Sorry, I'm not laughing at this guy's question. I just... 
I understand that you're a very busy man. I appreciate taking the time to read it, read this. Please keep writing, produce an awesome channel throughout my short career. You're a very sure source of reinsurance. I'm laughing because it's so true, and this kid gets it at 21. Like, he gets... If, if we could only talk about the last six months... I want to talk about the last six months. It is so true. This is... So... You're right. And this is the kind of kid that needs to be promoted and will never get promoted until he starts drinking the Kool-Aid in big gulp format. Um, I, I personally don't think it matters what service you're in. The system is designed not at your level. So for your first eight to ten years of your career, six to nine, if you will, it doesn't matter. Like you're you're going to go and fly – and it's going to be awesome, and you're going to love it. And then when you start getting towards senior 03, 04, that's when you're going to be like, I see this now. I see how promotions work. I see how, who is the, the what is rising to the top. And I don't know that it matters. Wombat, what do you think, man? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just I say pick the service that has the aircraft and the lifestyle you want to live. Be the person you're going to be and don't worry about the promotions. They'll either come or they won't, period. Because I would argue if you went back in history and spoke with pilots, forget fighter pilots, but pilots of every generation all the way back, um, you would see that some people feel that way. Is it worse now? Oh, I don't care. I'm not. Oh, dude, guess. That was just for me. Um, yeah. Is it worse now than it was 50 years ago? Maybe. But maybe people have just stopped worrying about what happened 50 years ago, right? So um, I think you're always going to see that. I think you're going to see that in any type of organization, military, um, civilian. It doesn't matter. Um, be the person you want to be. So what I would advise this individual First of all, congrats on being that um, prepared and getting through three years of the Air Force Academy. Nice job. Um, take a good hard look at both services. You know, do you want to do you want to forward deploy and live on bases? Do you want to live on ships? Do you want to fly? You know, the Air Force has some really cool planes, man. Some really cool planes that the Navy will never have just because of our mission. Um, Pick that, run with it, be the best you could be, and don't worry about the promotions and all the other stuff. Just don't. Be a good officer. Be a good person. Uh, don't be a douche, as Mover says, and and don't look back. Period. I say be prepared because you described me, right? I'm not in it for promotion. Well, I, I wasn't didn't. either. I, right, you too. It describes <laughs> basically everybody on the channel pretty much. Yeah. You know, most people that I'm friends with, it describes us because Gonky too. Yeah. Because there are, Gonky I would say still there's be an ensign if the Navy let him, let's be honest. Well, and that's true because <laughs> there are, there are two tiers of people that do this job, right? There sure. are, there's the one side that's like, I want to serve my country, serve for the guy or girl next to me. And be a bro like you and I were talking about the other day. We do this for the person next to us in our country. Yep. I want to fly jets and do the J-O-B. And I don't care about any of the other stuff. Like, I don't care about the politics. I don't care about OPRs and fit reps and, you know, rankings and PME and all that stuff. I care about doing the work. You know, the blue collar types. The problem is that is incompatible with the system long term because this long term, right? Long -term. Because the system is designed that everyone gets a bite at the apple and you are not compared against your peers that also want to do that. You're compared against the logistics folks and the, you know, the maintenance officer and other people that don't necessarily pull the trigger 
Mm -hmm. And so the metrics are you do the PME, professional military education. You, you do the squadron Christmas parties. You organize this. You know, you play the political games. And I'm talking higher level. I'm, you know, up sure. to 04, it's almost automatic. Mm -hmm. But to get to that point. Almost. 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 <laughs> your true story. But up to that point, you know, I mean, it's it's pretty level playing field. And then when you start to like, you know, the career and stuff like that, the problem is the people naturally that believe all that stuff is good don't necessarily believe the people who don't are worthwhile. So there'll be a clash, right? Because the people that in order to promote, they had to do all that will now look down upon the people that are like, look, dude, I'm just here. You know, I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. You know, I'm here to, to do what I need to do and move on. And I, I, that's you're going to be frustrated with that because throughout your career, you will always see that even in pilot training, even in pilot training where you're competing, you know, you'll have the salt of the earth types that are like, look, I'm here to cooperate to graduate which is what you should be. I'm here mm -hmm. to help everybody. And I, I want to learn and fly and have a good time and, and help your help my bros, boys and girls. And then you'll have the one that's like, I want to be number one in my class because I'm the best and I want to be the fighter pilot. And that will translate later on to, I want to get the number one fit rep. I want to get the number one, you know, promote EP. And then I want to make 05, 06, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's just two different types of people that do this. 100%. So that is why I always say, and I've said this many times, people are always asking me, they go, hey, there's a shortage of fighter pilots mover. How come they're not just hiring anybody? Because there's not a shortage of applicants. There's a shortage of retention. Mm -hmm. People get to the eight and 10 year point and they go, you know, I was never on this track. I didn't want to be, you know, I didn't want to do all the games. I'm going to the airlines where I can make twice as much money for half as much work. And oh, by the way, I can still do this part time. Right. Four and, times and not have to. Money, yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, well, first year pay, you know, whatever. Well, true. True. Uh, yeah, I mean, long term, long term. And that's right. fine. I think that's good. So a guy like this who's asking the question, I, I think, you know, the advice you gave and I gave is good. Look at look at what service you think is your best fit for your personality. Go nuts. You'll get through the first eight to 10 years. No problem. You'll be fine. And then reevaluate then. Because if you ask Gonky when we were studying advanced Air Force Base, what my career goals were, he would tell you that I was a dude, I'm going to do 20. 2020 20, all the way give me 20 years i am a life you said that about me oh oh that's what i was oh and then look at how my career panned out right so you never yeah. know what's really going to happen so that's don't true. worry about it there's nothing you can do about it well you, what you can, you can do, do you can control yourself and i would exactly. say going back to brett i would say first of all my advice would actually just be love the one you're with and probably and, easier at this you know point. i mean you're Three at this point the air force. I, well plus you go to the air force training you know you're more likely to get a pointy nose aircraft i mean sure. just statistically that. speaking sure. and i think the path that he's already on because at, at the three-year point he's indoctrinated with the air force mm -hmm. to go to the navy at this point he's going to be like me and gonky fish out of water no idea what he's doing you know he's going to be an outsider I think what he should do is go, I'm in it for the long haul. I understand that I understand the politics. I don't like the politics, but you can control yourself. You can control how you react to the politics. You can control, mm -hmm. you know, the helping your bros, you know, because it's like, dude, I, I, I will say this. I can't, I'm not going to talk about any of the stuff that's been going on, but I've, it has been a rough year and I've had good friends like you Wombat, And mm -hmm. one of the things you've told me, most recently is you don't do this job for anyone but the person next to you like you do it for the bros you do it because you know you care about the person next to you you care about the mission and you care about your country and if you keep that in mind i think that that will keep you going because the rest doesn't matter because no one in their career, you know, at the end of the day goes, well, who's the best general you ever worked for? It's like, mm -hmm. who cares? You know, yeah. I mean, it, that, that, I mean, you might know, you know, you might say, hey, he was a good overall leader.
But usually sure. when they say he's a good general, it's because they knew him when he wasn't a general. Yeah. It's very rare that somebody likes a general or an 06 or whatever while they're at that point. Because sure. by the time they get to that point, for the trigger puller at the lower level, it doesn't matter except, you know, policies that make no sense. So I, I think that if you, you know, kind of take scale it down from the macro to the micro and just go one foot at a time, one day at a time, let's get through each phase for the person next to you. Oh, man. I mean, you'll be a rock star in your class because yep. people will take note. Now, when it's time to make that decision, then you can go, okay, do I want to, uh, you know, take the blue pill or the red pill? You know, do I want to continue on this path and make it a career or do I want to, you know, okay, it's been a fun 10 years. I'm going to go to the guard. And then that's yep. it. You know, that's, that's the decision you have to make. So, um, I, I, I'm like you Wombat, you know, I, I was in a much different position when I started this than I am now. Um, and it just, you know, it, it throws surprises at you. Sure does. Sure All does. right. Let's uh, move on. Oof. I think we got a, yeah, that was a tough one, man. I've been putting tough. that one off for a while too. I that, he have. actually sent me that for a, a long time ago. Uh, say that name, Wombat, for $6.13. Please say the name. Jim Taco Bell. Oh. Where do you see where do you see? It? Are you reading the I was screen? Reading the, no, I was reading the uh, Hiram, Hiram Bifidum. Yeah, I don't know. Have you ever considered trying to do a podcast, USMC Lieutenant Colonel Jim Taco Bell? You've had credible, credible. So everybody always asks me that. And it's not that I haven't considered, like, I just don't know these people. When mm -hmm. you ask me if I've considered it, unless you can make that connection, which, by the way, Monday, Mace Curran interview. We're doing that. Talk it up. That'd be fun. Live. You know what I think would be an interesting interview if you could uh, just dial them up is um, is give old old Tom Cruise a call like and see what okay. he thought about riding in the back. I think I that'd be a great thing. I going to see if, if Margot Robbie could Oof. do some. So she could work the movie of Treason Flight? We could do an interview. It's, we could do an interview. And that's see not what, an interview that you're talking about, about the movies. at all. Well, I mean, it would at get all. a lot of you views. Are, it would get a lot, not a lot of views. It would. Um, <laughs> okay, back to the back to the uh, the kids at home. All right, this is from Basil. Whoop de doo, Basil, and he's from Oxfordshire, Oxford, Ooh. Oxfordshire. So he is Basil from whoop de doo. Uh, I will not read this in an accent, though. I have been watching your channel for some time now. I've read one of your books and thoroughly enjoyed it. After seeing your thank you video, I'd really like to ask you to accept the words that Wombat said, that yes, it was the fans who donated, but it was your inspiration, sincere leadership, and that you facilitated the means for them to donate that has made it possible to fund 6,500 scholarships. Also, I remember Shoes Mullen having something to say about the work that you do, and I would like to fully endorse their statements. Thank you for your service and both in the military and with police and all that you do on your channel. There are many future pilots that will be trained because of the advice that you've received from your channel. All the above you're continuing to do whilst facing personal good, hardships. Good use of that word. Yeah, it really is a good use. <laughs> and, and about that, I would say this to you. I've known the imposters that are wealth and lack. I've been at a place where I could buy toys, use them, get bored, and move on to the next one to get bored with. I've also been in a place where I have not known where my family's next meal was coming from. I've learned that wealth and poverty are a state of mind and not a state of being. It is possible to be both the wealthiest and poorest person at the same time. Boy, this is some wisdom here. I sincerely hope that this period of hardship ends very soon and that you reap the reward, that your humility of service and sacrifice will soon be rewarded with the riches you deserve. I have noticed that when you make a mistake, acknowledge it. you acknowledge it and own it. I would like you to do one more thing. You're a good man doing good things. Oh, I would like you to own one more thing. You're a good man doing good things. Kind regards, Basil. I agree. I don't say it as eloquently, but I agree. That was very, very well written. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been a rough time. Mm -hmm. But you're going to get through it because that's what you do. Uh, you hello, will. people of Twitch. Look, that's how you know it's a Twitch thing. It's got the little... Quotation what? mark thing. Hey, Mover, wanted to thank you for doing the IIB reports. Civilian student pilot. I think it has helped me. About oh, I see that now. Yeah. So. God, I am learning uh, so much about the internet. Charles Edward Fromage. 
Uh, what episode did you talk to the CGI guy from with Top Gun 2? The one that no longer <laughs> exists because Paramount uh, respectfully requested that he turn it's the, a good way to put it. I turned it's it off. It. Yeah. And then I said, sure. Sure, thanks. Will do. No problem. Um, so, yeah. There you go. Wombat, you need to tap dance while I go to the next one. Okay. Are you doing another email? Oh, nope, got one right here. That was easy. Got one. No more tap dancing. That was a good, good tap dancing segue. Because the, the title is "When is it appropriate to walk away?" Oh, this is a serious mover mailbag. My I, God, dude, it, it is. We're going. Oof. We're going. I wasn't the, prepared have, for this. People have. They're all impasse, and they have all keyed in on what's going on, and they've been like, "I have a question," and I'm like, "I don't know the answer." Before I start, I would like to say that I'm a big fan of the channel. I've tried to implement the make them tell you no philosophy in my day-to-day -day life since I started watching a few years back. With all that being said, I'm at a roadblock and was looking for advice. Back in 2020, I made the decision to enlist in the Air National Guard and been stuck in the process for nearly two years. Full disclosure, I had a slight medical episode in 2010 that is a waverable condition and one that I had already gotten a special issuance for a first-class medical from the FAA. I have gotten a clean bill of health from every specialist the Air Force has had me go to on my own dime and insurance. And both Perfect. MEPS and the Surgeon General keep requesting more and more paperwork and even repeats of the same medical tests done only six months prior. Not surprising. That's my words. So to make a long rant short, when is it appropriate to walk away? Because from where I'm standing, I'm still no closer than I was back in 2020. Thank you for your time. Very respectfully, Chris. And my oh, answer to that you. is... Nice. How nice. badly do you want it? Mm -hmm. I would say if it's something that is in your heart of hearts that you have to have that you want to do, I would you walk away when you've exhausted all options <clears> and you <throat> can sleep at night, you know, that you've done everything you possibly Agreed. can do and there's nothing left. You know, um, it sucks. I agree. The Surgeon General is usually not fun to work with. I've worked with him many times, unfortunately throughout my career. However, there's light at the end of the tunnel because eventually, you know, until that person, and that's why that's the whole make them tell you no, right? Is don't accept a no until you get to the very last one. And then you'll likely find that the answer is yes. But, you know, your 100% chance of failure is when you walk away. Until you walk away, you still got that option. You still got that ability. And really, I would keep going until you age out. I mean, that's just me, you know, if sure. I, if I really wanted this or, you know, maybe because you've spent so much money on it, I mean, until it's not financially feasible anymore, but at this point they should be, I mean, funding the cost, especially, uh, you know, guard TRICARE. I mean, you know, you, you might even have that, but I don't know. Wombat, what do you think, man? I agree. You know, it's the, you've heard the story we've talked about flying fighters and how bad I wanted to do that and how I didn't get it out of flight school and all that. And, um, the, uh, it, I, it basically came down to the fact of, you know, I tried to look ahead in my life. I tried to look at what I'd be like when I was 65, 70, 75 years old, you know, sitting on the front porch in a rocking chair, would I regret not doing it or not continuing to try? And the answer was yes. So I kept going. Um, I don't have anything that I regret in my career at all. I mean, I'm very happy. And you know the whole story of my career. I still mm -hmm. don't regret it. Where I'm at right now, nope, wouldn't change a damn thing. So um, was it always easy? Mover, was my career always easy? Nope. Uh, quite the opposite actually. So, um, but I, but it was one of those things where I just always looked at myself in the future and said, Hey, you know, at 70 years old, am I going to be looking back at my life going, man, what if I had just done one more thing? Could I have done that? And that's a, I don't want that feeling. That's horrible. So yeah. I say, keep going. Oh yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give up, you know, I mean, that's part of it too. I mean, you've got to have stamina. You know, you've got to have the ability, um, you know, you, you just have to push forward, you know, because it's yeah. it's not going to be easy. It's it's never even, you know, if if you can't push through now, 
Well, there's, this is going to be probably the easiest part of your career. I mean, there's yeah, going to be there's more gonna be difficult something. times in, in that. So, uh, anyway, all right. Good talk. Next question. Hello, Mover. Since you enjoyed reacting to our Top Gunner film so much, I thought you might enjoy a chance to ruin the sequel, Top Gunner Danger Zone. Here's a link to the trailer. Regards, Sasha Burrow. Oops. VFX coordinator, The Asylum. So that this is a guy who actually works on the movie that has asked me to ruin the movie as opposed to Paramount that does not want me to ruin the movie. No. 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 So we need to do that. That'd uh, be fun. Let's do that. Thanks, Megalodon. Um, yeah. So, hmm. Pat says, I believe when you say it's CGI, well... Because it was. I just thought it would be cool to listen to what the guy had to say. Yeah, it was cool. It was a great it interview. Was. It was. An it awesome was a great interview. interview. Um, it was. And it's just unfortunate, but that's the way it goes. Yeah. Um, I respect the wishes of my people that I interview. If they don't like it, you know, I'm not going to like keep sure. it up and be like, suck it up, dude. You said yeah. it. Yep. Um, so... Uh, I think that's the end of the questions. If anybody's got some stuff, oh, wait, this one. Uh, no, I get a lot of ads. Like people, like this business inquiry. We want to host for these electric vehicles. Like what now? Why are you emailing the mailbag? Yeah, I'll. Say All right, here's wrong. the last one. Here's the last one. I, I wrong person to ask about electric vehicles. Just uh, so we're clear. They're like the gingers of the car community. Uh, dark star scene mm. in the Top Gun <clears throat> mover. First of all, I think you have a great channel and put out excellent content. I've always been interested in military aviation. You do a great job presenting material without any ego and explaining things so they're accessible for general audiences. Keep up the good work. I know you've probably gotten a mil million emails about Top Gun, comma, colon, semicolon, backslash, Maverick. Sorry, I screwed that up. But I had a thought about why they included the Dark Star scene that I don't think you've touched on. I think the scene is in the movie because it's about the entire movie industry. You've wow. got major studios, Ed Harris, that want to get away from practical effects, manned aircraft, and rely exclusively on CGI drones. Tom Cruise, a literal maverick in this case, has been pretty vocal about wanting authenticity, practical effects, and higher quality studio releases, the Dark Star. In real life, he's apparently a nice guy who goes out of his way to help the cast and crew members, the skunk work guys, keep their jobs and push the envelopes of filmmaking, going to Mach 10 and risking failure. I just didn't think of that until I saw it again, but I think the opening scene is about aviation as much as it is about the film industry and what Top Gun Maverick is trying to accomplish. Just my two cents. Looking forward to your work, Nathan. So... It's a stretch. It, it's a commentary about relying on CGI by using a segment that's entirely CGI. Not sure I get it, but... All opinions are valid, valid and sure. useful. And thank you for the email. Uh, anyway, all right. Uh, let's take some FAQs Ooh, from the audience at home. Asked I don't know if they're FAQs. Let's take some questions from the kids at home, and then we'll uh, wrap this bad boy up. Okay. All right. Patriotic Rex, what is the Air Force version of a pink sheet? Wombat, what is a pink sheet? It's when you fail a fight. Oh, that's a taco. It's a you. Unsat. Oh, okay. You don't get any sheet. Mm -hmm. You just go to. Uh, well, I don't. Tanks. I think it's an old ho holdover because I don't. I think ours is all electronic now too. Oh God! I accidentally clicked on that one, so I guess we have to do it. Which simulator cockpit do you recommend? I'm new and I'm looking at next level racing foldable simulator racing cockpit. I have that. They sent that to me. I it, it didn't work out. I don't have the room for it, so it didn't work out that great. But. It's a Is great it because starter Because people thing. send you so much stuff, you just don't have the room. They do to send put. me a lot of stuff. Yeah, it must I be nice to have so many fans. These are companies. They're just like, here you go. You That's what I this? meant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, CC says Wayne Gretzky quote about missing a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. That's actually Michael Scott quoting Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> All this from a guy who drives a Mustang. Hmm. Uh, Never gets old. It doesn't Never really. I can't wait to talk to that guy and be like, sir, tell me about your Mustangs. 
See if he gets triggered. Uh, <laughs> I hope he does. Uh, There's curious. tons of good questions. Where is Gonky? Is he safe? Is he all right? He is currently in captivity. At, is at he, the Air Force is, base. He's, yeah. uh, he's doing what I did. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing orders, right? Question. My 18 year old daughter really wants a motorcycle. What do you think? Wear a helmet. Yeah. Lots of fists. protection. In all Lots aspects of, of life. That is actually just good advice. Protection yeah. in general, whether it's through personal protection, rider safety, rider safety. Yeah. All of the did you ever ride things. motorcycles? I did. I was the guy. I had the dragon jeans, the ones that no. were like Kevlar lined. Uh, of course uh, you did. And the jacket and the helmet and stuff. It was did. hot too. It was in Arizona. Yeah. That's why I quit riding. Because but by, by the time I put all that crap on, I was like, God, it's too hot. Yeah. So I yeah. got a convertible instead. Oh, that's cool. Uh, that's not uh, yeah. with the air conditioning. That helps. Yeah, it really helps. Um, why is it called a pickle button, Wombat? I don't know. Do you know? Bombs look like pickles. Okay. I have so no when idea. You drop actually. one, it looks like a pickle coming off the. It's as good a reason. It's three, two, one, pickle. Pickle is the verb. Yeah, I don't know. So it's a pickle switch. Huh. Wombat. Gonky wants a Prius. Nah, that's not true. You don't that's know. That's not Gonky. true. That's not yeah. true at all. Gonky's yeah. on his 2003. Dodge Ram 2500. He's never going to get rid of. Nope, never will. He has no emissions whatsoever. He'll bury him in that thing. Yeah. Or uh, it might can bury. pilots in the military wear C bands for motion sickness? Uh, I don't know. Probably not, but not yes, required can. because if can they? Mm -hmm. Oh, this man knows. But by the time mm -hmm. you're like flying, they don't. Did you need they it? don't work. But right. I don't but see yeah, why you, you need it. Yeah. I tried them. They didn't work, but you can wear them. Nobody cared. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. If you were to replace the Hellcat, God, yes. I wait to. Yes. Uh, so I looked at the Cadillac Escalade. Those are nice. I just saw they one. They are new nice, Earth but they're Escalade. overpriced by yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh, Gonky yeah. says, my people miss me. So he's sitting there in his jail cell. That's funny. Watching this as we go. Um, so I gonky. really, what I'm thinking about doing is as the mark, as the driving it off pools, a cliff and then a Tahoe, you know. no, just a regular Tahoe, like nothing fancy. It's Cause you have Tahoe. your Tahoe now you have your cop Tahoe. I so love, I do. It, it, like it? it's, it has cop convinced toe? me that I don't need a 6.2 liter engine and that it like, cause it's just a beater. I've got the vet blink twice. If you're being held hostage. No, I'm just saying, I don't, uh, Hey mover, met you at the gym two weeks ago. Oh. Were you doing Were you doing biceps, bro? Were Just wanted to say thank you for, for being approachable at the gym and taking the time out of the day. Well, first of all, thank you. Second of all, I apologize to anyone that approaches me because my initial my initial reaction is always shock and karate. Oh. No, it's just karate because it, I'm very resting bitch face because yeah. like I'm not used to people approaching Some would argue me. Some not resting bitch face as well. Just, like, just active just bitch face. <laughs> active, active, active angry mover. And then I, yeah. I have, I have learned, I'm trying to learn because the one time where I just totally lied to the poor kid and said that I didn't know who, who had a YouTube channel and why are they asking me these questions. <laughs> but so I'm trying to get better about this because I, you know, if I'm going to be notable, I want to be like Keanu, you know, where it's like just a cool bro. But you have a long way to go. Man. I have a you really long there. way to go. I have a long way to go. So Did I am... just humbly compare yourself to Keanu Reeves. Is that no, I said, if happened? I ever get there, I said, if I ever get there, I want to be I want to be able to shred at Terran Tactical and then be cool when people meet me and gracious. So but I'm glad that that interaction, because I can, I'm always awkward at first, no matter who meets me, even if they know me. That's true. The first time I met uh, you, super awkward. What? Yeah. Still have it. Uh, Cornwallis Wilbur. Nice. Is what uh, the CW stands for. <laughs> oh, here we go. Somebody knows the answer. Drop it yeah. down the pickle barrel. Oh. I don't know if that's true. I, I feel I like mean, But it's just, just as good as good. your guess, so. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, first of all, that's what she said. Well, she is. Wait, is this Andrea male or female? Because that name could go either way. But second, 
It's not because I got three full size dogs and there's no such I, thing. Dude, they're amazing. I saw one at my detailer's place when I got yeah. the last car detailed. And then I saw one, or I'm sorry, when I got the Shelby wheels detailed, I saw one and I was like, we talked Mustang. about that. I was like, dude, that Mustang, looks yeah. really good. They have, And then I just saw another one uh, in the, the Jack car thing. Yeah, but and these people like, are like 30 grand over MSRP. They've lost. Yeah, no. Nope. Dude, but look at the all MSRP the... MSRP was already high, and then they went on top of that. Yeah. Look at all the people you know on here. I guarantee you there's a General Motors dealership somewhere that would love to help move her out. Anyway. I've gotten emails, and they, you know what they said? They said, we love to help you out when the market cools off. Yeah. Which well. is like... Never. In other words, please buy our big vehicle when nobody else will buy them. That's all they're yeah. saying. That's Wait until we need you. Yeah, Shanghai okay. says it's the Norden bomb sites. Okay. I mean, with this picture, okay. that means he's probably the most notable. Because anyway, yeah, he knows. Um, yeah, um, I every time I do the sheriff stuff, they make me shave. So no. Do they really? You can't beard. have a beard. Only in really? November and December, which is weird. For prostate it's cancer. Cold? Or oh. No, okay. prostate cancer. <laughs> anyway. Uh yeah. So anyway. Anyway. What else do we have? Uh, what else? Mick says he's dying. So let's go ahead and call the ambulance on that. Oh, here yeah. we go. Here we go. Here we go. The Norden bomb site was said to help put the bomb in the pickle jar, hence the pickle button. Ah. Uh, so uh, the actual uh, site, not the uh, site. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we're learning things. Yeah. Why do people yeah. think I don't have legs? I have legs. Is it a camera? I don't Maybe. know. Uh, do you I work out your legs? Pants. Do a lot I of squats? I don't wear pants. Uh, yeah. Do a lot of squats, squats for the ladies. They like of... it. <laughs> I don't think that's how that goes. Not Hood Chevy. Hood Chevy has nothing on their lot. That's the dealership nearby. Oh, really? Yeah. So, Mover, you ever go to the Thunderbirds air shows in Nellis in November? No. I don't go to the New Orleans air show in whenever it is. Like, go to air show. Yeah, somebody asked me the other day. They're like, "Are you going to the the Blues are coming here?" And I'm like, hmm. "Nope." Seen them. Thanks. I've never seen them, so I don't believe you. Well, again, I don't wear pants. So when I did yeah. my airline interview, I did that with no pants. Did you? Mm-hmm. Were you the on... one time when you could wear no pants and actually get hired by a Fortune 500 or whatever company? Because it's you know the first part is the zoom call or whatever see i didn't have and a zoom call mine was all in person i'm pretty I just sure wore the that top was. of the suit god you're awesome man and if you if you could have not worn pants you'd have done that too it's yeah i was a little right. worried that they would ask me to stand up though yeah that would have been funny yeah my questions will never be read but i still post them it's kind of like a public service announcement what was this question i don't know there's a lot of stuff happening <laughs> there's a in the lot comments of things that I, I miss dude yeah. i'm i need a producer you do. You do. Rick Hendrick dealers have a lot of inventory. We don't have that around here. Dude, yeah, the key Ke Keanu parts speaking off made me laugh with Wombat's reaction. Yeah, man, you can be cool. Just be you. Just be you. Just be See? you. Uh Just be Mover, you. did you find pulling G's tougher in the F sixteen compared to the F six F eighteen? Yeah, because one was nine and one was like you were lucky if you pulled six. Like, how often did you actually go anywhere near the G-Limiter in the Hornet? It's very rare. Um, only when we were slicked off for BFM debts. If you had anything. I mean, you were good you, at BFM. You didn't need to pull a bunch of Gs. Well, that's why I, oh, you just answered my question. I know, uh, yeah. I fought BFM like a Hawkeye guy would. <laughs> just, Ones and zeros. <laughs> go as fast as you zero. can and pull to the... Yeah, yes. okay. Good to see you two. Watching you is like taking a break from a crappy day during an even crappier week. By the way, should you put an APB for Gonky? No, Gonky, I know exactly where Gonky is sitting right now. And if someone walks in while he's watching this, we're likely to all get paperwork. Not me. <laughs> Not me. Well, I'm done. They'll figure out a way. They'll come after you, Wombat. Mm -hmm. Please. Uh, we already request... covered that. Yeah. We already Go covered back. the pickle button. Yeah. Go back, hit, scroll hit up. Rewind. We talked about it. We talked about it. Come on. It's taking Come time. on. How much do you and pilots you play DCS with have to censor yourselves to avoid giving away anything confidential? That's why I don't do BVR stuff. That's why, you know, you, there's a lot of stuff you can't do, and that's why I don't. So there. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's not not worth it. I'd be willing to help produce former Air Force CC. Okay. You're hired. <laughs> I see Wombat was finally bullied enough to remove the expensive potty chair. Got this chair has now bridged over multiple. It's more famous than Gonky. You know what's funny? <laughs> so you know, you know that I did uh, the interview with um, what's the other one? Air crew interviews that that YouTube channel or whatever it is, and they just put up a teaser. And somebody in the comments, there's 15 comments on that teaser, right? And of the 15, there's at least one talking about my chair. How ridiculous Good. is that? Good, it's insane. Your chair is, is very important. That chair is awesome. Super comfortable. Uh, hey, how is your younger brother Hangman doing? He went quiet since the movie. He's doing that other movie. Yeah, that's um, going to be good. Devotion. Yeah. I think that might be better than Top Gun. It might actually have a story. <laughs> Top it Gun might actually be well written. Mm. You know? Unless it's uh, another Mission Impossible. Uh, well, Tom Cruise isn't in it, so why would it be that? Oh, if you're looking to argue with Wombat, uh, please send all the share emails my way. Instagram, uh, trmatson.com. I love, it. I love uh, angry emails, they make my day. Uh, love from Taiwan. Hmm. I actually cool. applied to a job that would have been involved with the Taiwanese. Like going over there, like, like Gonky no. did, or no? No, like a military job that was trained them. Oh. Uh, I'd be willing to produce. So, I, I don't know if I have any helicopter folks here, but for the second time since I've known about this helicopter, it is now down because someone started it and oversped it on startup. I don't even know how oh. that's possible. But Sounds cheap. It's down for eight weeks. Yeah, Sounds so I can't fly super anything. Cheap. It's Sounds definitely super cheap. Oh, he's crew chief. No, crew okay. chiefs are awesome. Yeah, they, they keep are. us going. Yeah. The chair has to feature in the upcoming feature film, Treason Flight. Oh, yeah. It'll be in there. Jack Carr did a cameo in his Netflix thing. If I ever get Treason Flight to be a movie or a Netflix special, the chair is going to do the cameo. That's Dude, it. Dude, you could play the Australian flight attendant. <laughs> Super. <laughs> Super. That's more of like you a can... broke back no, mountain dude, version it's, of it's a, it's a very progressive, it's progressive, forward thinking. Like you would open yourself up to such a wider audience if you did that. I think that's that's a winner. I'm we still dealing that. with being open to the audience I currently have. A uh, buddy of mine is currently an Air Force basic in Texas. How beat up is he going to be? I mean, he's not not at all. He's going to basically he's living in the lap of luxury. Yeah. I mean, it's the Air Force. And no, they might call him a meanie hat or something. <laughs> but uh, why is it easier to pull G's in the Viper? Uh, so it's an Air because Force jet it, the and G limiter are weaker. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> nine G's, dude. Hard to be humble at nine G's. Hard to be humble at nine G's. How is Luna? Luna is awesome. She's. A thick girl. She's on a diet right now. <laughs> She's got to lose some weight. And it's my homie Fred Lynn, the man, the myth, the legend. I'm still getting told that I'm wrong, Fred. I Thanks a lot. What is this about? Love, love you, man. You don't remember Fred? Fred's the Fred's the VFX guy. Oh, that's yeah. A cool picture. Yeah, that's he's yeah. in incognito no, there's, with, there's his, with his absolutely real name in the comments. <laughs> there's absolutely no. Uh, there's no CGI in Top Gun. It's 100%. What is the address? <laughs> Stand by. Boom. TR Matson, 312 Crosstown is Road. The right is that Box the right or, or container. That's the one you gave me, dude. So they're sending stuff there. Uh, Peachtree City, Georgia. Three, and it's got a 6-9 at the end. So that's that means a lot. Yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, have you mm. ever been to Malaysia? No, uh, yes. but Gonky has. When will you put Flight of the Intruder? As soon oh, as Paramount you lets to me. do that. And nobody's asked that yet. Oh. Well, not today. It's the first time he's asked me today. <laughs> do single seat fighter pilots have to wear poopy suits over water? Yes. All pilots it sucks. have to wear poopy suits. It's over the water. worst, and no, thank you. You know what was worse? Flying the E two in one. Honestly, seriously. It was because in the in the Hornet you just sit and you don't move. Oh, 
But in the E2, you uh, have to get in there and like walk down the. It was not comfortable. Anyway, I think the worst was when I had to wear one in the Hornet. The Hornet was not comfortable to wear. And the one that I got from my E2 squadron apparently was too small. So I couldn't lift my leg high enough at the rag to get up the ladder. So yeah. they had to like push my yeah, foot up. Yeah, that was the same thing. Yeah, they told us we might have to wear poopy suits for the T-38. And I told them I would be Deniff because yeah. I just wouldn't fly. I just the Marines fly in my air wing when I was an E2 guy would just cut this part of the poopy suit and wear that. Like a dicky. Uh huh. That's all they would yeah, fly. That's you would see smart. it. It would look like a poopy suit, but well, they look I mean, super comfortable. You, let's and be you're going to die anyway. You're dead. You're going to die. Yeah, you're There's dead. no way that thing's going to hold no, together not, when you're you anything. So. Not, a, not even a little bit. Yeah. Um, when is a new book coming out, Wombat? Dude, so here's the problem with a new book. Can we talk about writing a little bit? Is this a. Let's talk about writing. I'm going to get a, a drink. Okay. So I am at. And when the book comes out, Go back mm -hmm. to this video, go to this moment, breaking news. I am at the most, in my opinion, pivotal time of writing stories. Okay. So, so in this particular book, the story, this is going to be a huge moment, right? There's always that build up, And then it's like, Whoa, that was the moment. Everything changed. Don't the climax too soon. Well, exactly. The problem do that. is for the most part, I mean, you know, all the changes going on in my life with retiring from the Navy and work yep. stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. Like, I am in a really good place right now. Oh, so you can't write. Angry. It's hard to go to a really dark place, which is where I need to be to write this chapter. It's one chapter. Once I get through it, it'll be fine. But it's I, I found it very hard to get through. And I want to make it good because it's such an important part of the book. I see. So that's my problem right now. My problem is the exact opposite. I'm in you too dark no of a time. place. No, I'm in, I'm in the war. Like I, I'll it's write too yours. Dark. You write mine. I have to step <laughs> up out of the dark place to get into a place because otherwise it would be very bad. Yes. Like now granted, it could, it could, be really just, good be a, though. It could just be a full Kruger book, which I've wanted be. to do anywhere where Kruger just runs around, you know, just Kruger. Yeah. That'd yeah. be cool. Bub. That'd be cool. Do you but have a work in progress or no? I, I've written two or three chapters in it. Okay. In the yeah, Kruger maybe. book or in a different? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it be, picks I, up. I'd read that. It picks up. I mean, I'd read it, it's a, book, so. it's a Yeah. Okay. That's how we met. You read my books first. Yep, I did. And I was a total fanboy. You, I was you like, fangirl to Gonky. I did. And Gonky I was fangirl. like, I know him. Yeah. Uh, there we like, go. He's amazing. A uh, question for both of you. Would you rather fly fighter jets or fight in weaponized armor suits that could fly? Which so one Iron holds Man? my peanut butter and jelly sandwich better when I fly? Because I like to eat a little snack. I'm a little hungry. I got hungry. It's going to be tough to do that in a flying suit. I can't. Dude, I can't. Would you rather be a potato or French, a French fry? French fry? <laughs> I, I don't know. Neither? One's cooked and one is, <laughs> I don't know, man. That's, that's is this the question. same guy that asked about... Uh, his <laughs> daughter having them like I feel like those are the complete opposite ends of questions. Like the, the chair should be featured in the front cover for the. No. Oh, you know what I was gonna. I was gonna Manchester. Yeah, your your face. No, no. Is it gonna be your uh, thing here? I'm going to tell him lap of luxury when he gets back if he complains about it. <laughs> you should. You should. Oh, Fred, he's sipping some tea <laughs> as he's stirring the pot over there. Good. Good. Uh, Good. I like it. I like it. Oh, Mover, one question I've always wanted to ask. Flying the F-16, oh. have you ever gotten some bad FOD days for an object debris? I love that, Jack. You mean, so do you mean in the cockpit or do you mean <laughs> like, because it's a Hoover? Because... <laughs> So no to both. However, I knew a guy that spilled some jelly beans, and when he landed, he goes, "Hey, I, hey, chief, I uh, dropped a bag of jelly beans, and it was like 350 jelly beans that actually he had dropped, and because they, they counted it for him, nice. uh, so it was more than just a couple. And so I didn't have any in the Viper. I did have one in the F-18, and I've told that story where the thing came out my pin pocket, went to the back Way that's because you guys yeah. fly around all tactical without your flaps over your pin because the flap looks stupid like you look yeah. like a nerd hey did the guy climbing in headfirst behind your ejection seat look stupid trying to find your cheap pen 
he was so far behind the ejection seat. He wasn't even. He was like behind <laughs> behind the ejection seat. I've told you my two plastic. Yeah, my two funny ones, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm still. Uh, I still think they're getting sour skittles out of wall banger six hundred two floorboards. I, but. I saw an older video. You were looking at a Vans. Are you still thinking about getting one? No, I can't afford an airplane right now. They should give you one. No, I can't afford to build one either. I don't. I can't build. I'm not a builder. Mover does not. Somebody build. should should give you an airplane. No, I like mean, a real air one, fully yeah. functional. Yeah. Already, already built. Fred wants to know if I'm going to do audiobooks. You do. Are, I've got are all yours? Books. Are they all done audio? Or well, no? last time I mentioned that I might read the audiobook for I Am the Sheepdog and No Justice, you guys laughed at me and said that I have too high pitched of a voice and I am not, I am not wow. aggressive enough. So I, I think that you guys need to stop making fun of me. Wow. Yeah. Somebody so, just got triggered. Wow. So I'm all your books are not on audio. That's interesting. I didn't know that. I no, they're not. No. Okay. I have a really bad narrator for the first couple of two. Like, uh, concur. Like, you do. It's like you, it's like George do. Carlin doing Thomas the Tank Engine. It's you, I'm just waiting for that contract to time out. How much longer is that thing got? I would be oof. Mover, would you rather be I'm gonna I'm gonna talk all gravelly now just so yeah. you guys Ooh, can uh, would you rather move. be yeah. <laughs> Uh, in the Eagle Squadron or in the 926? Uh, hogs, dude, all day long. Yeah, I want a mission. All day. Yeah, I want to shoot the gun. I want to have a mission. I want my neck to still be existent after a 20 year career, which it currently is not. Is your neck really Did you go you? to the Air Force or Naval Academy? No. If so, do you think you could make a video on what the process through high school was like? Those are two separate things. So, no, I can't because yeah. I went to real college. Yeah. Wombat, what's your favorite plane of all the times? Of all the times. I don't know, man. I don't know. Okay, good talk. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I To put one? Set up a GoFundMe for a What's yours? Yours was the Viper, right? Yeah, no. No. Of all time? Like, do no. I have to have flown it? See, that's the thing. There's too many variables. Yeah. I mean, the Tomcat. You know? Because it's awesome. Say it. Uh, Tom Katz. Uh, yeah, I think somebody should set up that GoFundMe, but if it's anything like Fights On, we will not reach our goal. Not, not with that attitude, that mister. Not with that attitude. Not with that attitude. I hear Mover's voice in my head when I read. I'm really sorry for you. <laughs> Man. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Thought we were just having good. Uh, yeah, nature. well, what's the worst emergencies you guys had to deal with? Oh my goodness! Gee dunk, hot wings on takeoff. You're see, that's the difference between Air Force and Navy guys. I was in the Navy. You, yeah, but like, that's a physiological dude. There's nothing worse than a physiological episode. I disagree. I had a plane that wouldn't turn left. That's pretty bad. Yeah, so. whatever, dude. Whatever. <laughs> NASCAR. No, they always turn left. turn left. It's the opposite. Uh, so Hanger Rat says, I finished my second book after being inspired by Mover. When he mentioned in a mailbag episode that he had written 12, I got to it. Thanks again. Nice. You're welcome. Look at uh, you. I know somebody else that was inspired to write a book by me. Who? Who? Anybody we know? Is it a good book? Can I, how, do you, how do I point? I don't know. <laughs> God, this is embarrassing. <laughs> This is bad. This is going off the rails. Can we talk about this? Is spatially wrong. Oh, there we go. It's right not there. right. That's not. I don't know what you're doing. Okay. Wow. Is this hard for you? Are you? That's what she said. Uh, all right. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry to hear that. Uh, we're, uh, we're, we've, 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 <laughs> first of all, I just love that he called him Gunky. Gunky. And I, yep. I would like him uh, to keep this. Is this is, uh, we know this is this has uh, gone off the rails. I would also like to challenge Nappy ninety one that I don't know if Gonky could read an audiobook. Can Gonky read Boom? He has a Mustang. And he thinks you should get a real car, Wombat. I don't know. Hmm? 
Exactly. That's I don't. I think you read that wrong. I think you wombat read that wrong. get a real car. It says it right That's there. Wombat not... <laughs> get a raw. raw. <laughs> he's telling everyone that he's got a Mustang, and he's like, "Wombat, get a real car." Uh, anyway, so what's the next thing we're doing together? Let's talk about that. What do you want to do? Let's do something fun. You, we talked about Flight of the saying, Intruders for you, listen. A long first time of all, I'm getting comments that people would rather you on my channel than me, and that hurts yeah, my feelings. I don't like that, because... especially when you send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping you would have forgotten that one. That was pretty funny, yeah. though. Oh, yeah. Jesus. This is me. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, uh, so, what should we do next? Well, we uh, do? apparently, there's a job opening for Prime Minister. And Prime I could be Prime Minister. That'd be cool. Yeah, that guy just resigned, right? Or is resigned? Can I fly? Is it a flying job? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you could do whatever you want. That's the beauty of the yeah. job. Uh, oh. the, um, is it illegal that virtual, I mean, illegal, you got to read it out loud in case somebody's not watching. Is it illegal that virtual pilots believe they are fighter pilots? Listen, we live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. You can identify as whatever you want. I just don't have to accept it. That's true. That's so true. You're free to be whatever you want. I'm free to therefore not disagree. believe you. <laughs> disagree. <laughs> Mover, you don't have feelings. Well, that wow. First of all, wow, is wrong. Yeah, wrong. that's Mover is full of the feels. He's I'm all in, in the fields. All in. Hugh Janus <laughs> says hot tub stream. That would be. And I'm sorry funny. about your anus. <laughs> Must be an eagle guy. Mm, wow. Whoa. Bazinga. Uh, oh, you guys. Let's move back towards Wombat's GT500. Yeah. Why don't you, so why don't you do this in your garage so we can have the Mustang behind you the whole time? It's 700 degrees out there right now. It's so, so hot out the, there. The more you sweat in here, the less you bleed in the street. I don't care to do either right now. So remember I told you I'm in a good place. Um, yeah. People have asked me that. They want to do a car thing, which I think is interesting but it's so hot out there right now oh look there's a lot of jobs open can you come be the prime minister of canada wow do you have to renounce your citizenship i like montreal it's a nice area yeah yeah didn't they just give uh, up all their guns though i don't know if you'd like that well if i'm in charge prime I can minister tell them to do whatever yeah i can yeah, everybody true. has to have one now uh thank you zebra bob Oh, no, we just figured out. Oh, because this is Twitch. Twitch is not familiar with Wombat. Um, oh, so. Am I going to get a yeah, whole bunch got of a new Mustang. followers because you went on yeah, Twitch today? The, the Twitch, the Twitch folks are going to be. So. Speaking of Twitch folks, I, I'm eventually <laughs> going to do probably some DCS stuff again. I just, you know, Raymond has, has betrayed me. Douglas is having some personal stuff where he can't right now can i do any twitch stuff on my my if we did the x container stuff we could yeah okay you I'm gotta get a headset no for your xbox Ooh, perfect and microsoft can you have sense. somebody send me one for free like you get all your stuff i buy my stuff first oh, of all okay okay all right okay uh, i would do that is there an e2 on the xbox that i can play uh probably mm -hmm. not it's the xbox mm -hmm. dude Okay. Um, so physics. anyway, all right. Well, that's an hour. I've had enough. I think the people have had enough. I like this question though. It's not a question; it's a statement. Wombat needs to do streams in his poop chair. Sorry, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. That chair's gone. You know how heavy that ready room chair is to bring downstairs from the attic. My God. Don't Things you do ridiculous. CrossFit though? Wasn't that like the lot? I do the not wad? do CrossFit. I do not. Do CrossFit you at do. All. Don't lie, dude. You I do don't. It. No. You one thousand percent do CrossFit. False. False. What are you talking about? You've done more CrossFit than I have. I know. And hurt it yourself. Was a very traumatic experience. <laughs> well, most traumatic. cults are. So, um, I do not do CrossFit. Sorry. Okay. You cool. Well, like any other professional channel. I'm going to go ahead and uh, end it right here and tell you goodbye.
Wombat, as always, last-ish words. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Buy Buck up, Buttercup. You're doing great. Things are going to be Don't buy better. my book. Mm, buy all of his books. Don't buy Can any I books. Can I say to buy your books? I don't, I don't think legal? so. I don't know. Why? I'll be coming after uh, me. I think, all right. I think you should buy... Yeah. I don't want to get another raw deal. You're not getting so raw deals. How I'm many books have you deals. written? 12? I don't know, 11, actually. 10? 11 or 12. Yeah. In the vicinity. They, I would like to see somebody buy all of them at once, just for fun. I did that. I would like someone in Hollywood to buy it and say, hey, this is so good that let's make the movie. Yeah. Or series. Let's do that. Yeah. A series. That's a lot of. All right. All that's right. Good night, everybody. Or afternoon. Good day. Or morning. Goodbye. You know where you're at. Yeah. See ya.